Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I've come to you today to do a little Bible study on James chapter 1. I've been praying to the Lord the last several days. What should I share with them? What should I share? I want to share something that will be meaningful, that will help somebody. And I was using my Bible, my actual book Bible, and um, I actually opened it to the very front and I had several scriptures written down. You know, just like there was James 1 verses 20 something, a couple of verses. And I'm like, well, you know me, I can't just do two. So I'm doing the whole, the whole chapter. And this is a real good one that will help some people. I don't know if any of you need this, but some people you know might. So, uh, I'm trying to get where that sun, make sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, anyway, let me first say the name of the doggy is Jasper. One person suggested it. I... I was so torn between Joey and Marky, or Mikey, and when someone suggested Jasper, and they said, look it up, and I did, and it, the basic meaning is Jewel, which is the only masculine name for a boy that you would name after a jewel, Jasper. It's one of the jewels used to build the New Jerusalem, the foundation. It's one of the jewels they used in the priest's ephods way back in the Old Testament. When the priests had to, well, I guess they're still planning to wear them when they open the third temple, if it ever gets built. But anyway, there are some other meanings too, like treasure, uh, treasurer could be a treasurer, but anyway, and one of the wise men was named Jasper, and I believe that came from the Catholic Church, so I, you know, that it was not, that was not in my decision making, but um, there, that other site had the reasons, I just said that, that is so perfect, so. We've been caught. me and my friend have been calling him Jasper, and I think he's getting used to it. We'll see. He's sleeping right here. He just follows me all around and stays right by me. Okay, so let's go to James chapter 1 if you'd like to follow along. And I'm in the NASB. Now, the first part is titled, Testing Your Faith. We don't want our faith to be tested, do we? But boy, when things go wrong in your life, it tests your faith. It shouldn't test it much, but it does. For a lot of people, especially that are, aren't real strong in the faith, maybe, and they prayed and prayed and prayed over their dog, and their dog died, it could test their faith. It didn't test mine, but I was still... Like, Lord, I know you could have healed my dog. I know you can do everything. Well, it wasn't, his, it wasn't in his plans for some reason. Okay. So, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. The twelve tribes. So James is particularly writing to the Jewish, uh, well, maybe all the Jews, because he knows they're all dispersed, but that many of them are Christians or of the way. I think they were called Christians by this time. Anyway, moving on. Consider it all joy my brethren, when you encounter various trials, I know that is hard, but let me keep on, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Every time you pass a test, 
you produce endurance for the next thing that comes along. When you see how God has brought you through this thing, you know he'll bring you through the next. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. See, nowhere in the Bible do we read, well, God understands that we're all only humans. You know, that, that's what a lot of people want to say. We're just humans. I'm just human. I can't help it. I'm just human. Well, God expects us to be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Very hard to do. Let's keep on. Let's keep going. Chapter uh, Verse 5. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith, without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. So have you been asking for something but doubted? That'll nullify your prayers. It could. It could. He's saying that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. If you pray for something and then you really think, Oh, I doubt he'll give that to me. Well, no, he wants to give you wisdom, endurance, uh, an extra measure of faith, uh, the, the gift of praying in the Spirit, uh, the gift of healing. These things he wants us to ask for and for understanding when we read the Word. Okay, you just pray asking in faith. Being, okay, let me back up. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. But the brother of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position. See, the humble man is to glory in his high position. And the rich man is to glory in his humiliation. Because like flowering grass, he will pass away. I'm not real sure what that means. How can you glory in your humiliation if you know you're like flowering grass that will pass away? Rich people don't tend to, to like anything like that, you say. You can tell them, uh, dude, you you should glory in your humiliation because you're just going to die and fade away like flowering grass. They would laugh at you. So I, I Feel free to leave your comments, but I, I do not understand what that means. I mean, I know that's what's going to happen if they don't humble themselves, repent, and turn to the Lord. That's what will happen. Maybe that's all he means by it. For the sun rises, I'm in verse 11 now, James 1, 11. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass, and its flower falls off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too, the rich man, in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. Yep. There's not very many rich people who are going to make it. Like Jesus said, it'd be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. 
Does anybody want to go to heaven just to escape earth? Or do you want to go to heaven because you love the Lord? And you will love the appearance of his coming. Not just so you can escape a bad situation. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. And he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. When the lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Okay, this is important. If a thought flashes through your head as you see a pretty woman walking by, talking to guys now, hopefully only the guys, the thought is not the sin. But if you follow her or she sits down near you, say you're at work, and you keep looking at her and you let the thoughts continue and you imagine things then you've conceived when lust will give birth to sin and why does it say it brings forth death because if you don't repent if you don't as quickly as possible stop say Lord I am so sorry you get up and you walk away and you ask for forgiveness and wipe your slate clean again because people who die with all that kind of stuff on their slate sin in their heart and they don't ever say Lord forgive me because they didn't actually do anything it was all up here you see, our thoughts can condemn us. It says here in verse 16, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good thing, this must be a new paragraph. Well, no, it isn't. He said, Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. I used to say that when I got Buddy, that every good thing given and every perfect gift is, come, is from the Father. So I reckon this little Jasper is too. Um, father loves to give gifts and that's why we just have to ask believing that we'll get what we're asking for sometimes we don't get it but that could be a test of your faith I don't know why we don't always get what we want our father knows what's best he knows what's best in the exercise of his will he brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be now listen to this Jesus has done died rose from the dead this is years later James is being told to record this by the Holy Spirit. This is all God inspired word. In the exercise of his will he brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. And that the footnote says a certain first fruits. The true believers 
will be the first fruits to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, pastors that are saying, no, Jesus was the first fruits, he was the barley, the barley's already been done, and all that. I mean, I'm sure they mean well and they don't mean to be wrong, but it's right here. We would be a kind of first fruits or a certain first fruits among his creatures. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Come on in! For the anger of man does not achieve their... Oh! I'll, I'll come. You stay, it's alright. Hey. I gotta stop it. Here. I was making a video. Aren't you being good?